reliable. DCTV does not affirm the completeness and accuracy. All DCTV members agree to adhere to DCTV's statement of compliance and are participants in a community medium forum where they're exercising their freedom of speech. All opinions expressed on any program are those of the producer and are persons appearing on the program and do not necessarily reflect the views and opinions of DCTV. All producers and guests appearing on programs provide information and opinions based on information they consider to be reliable. DCTV does not affirm the completeness and accuracy. All DCTV members agree to adhere to DCTV's statement of compliance. Good evening. I'm your host, Karen Nunes, in this series on the Network of Global Corporate Control. Today's show is live and is about demanding our gold. Thanks, as always, to DCTV, to Carmen Stanley, Project Director, Maurice Jackson, Studio Director, and Jasmine Brown, who's on audio and prompter. Like a surfer, I have to wait for the wave to catch it. The wave is people demanding their gold. Last week, we heard from Edgar Lantuck an overseas Filipino worker about how the Philippines' national hero, Jose Rizal, and his lawyer, Ferdinand Marcos, deposited the world's wealth at the World Bank and International Monetary Fund. Today, we're going to discuss what's happening. Royalty and other rich people used to own the world's gold. In between World War I and World War II, they gave their gold away in return for Treaty of Versailles bonds that were issued by the Federal Reserve Bank. Two quadrillion dollars worth of bonds are in the global debt facility because Jose Rizal also represented the royal bloodline families who exchanged their gold for bonds issued by the Federal Reserve in the 1930s. As a lawyer working in the World Bank's legal department, I knew what to do with the Treaty of Versailles bonds held in the global debt facility. I recorded the debt of the Federal Reserve under the Uniform Commercial Code with all of the secretaries of state where the Federal Reserve has offices. And then I issued a notarial protest for this debt with the Universal Postal Union. On January 1, 2015, I wrote to the Postmaster General of the United States. I said, the Board of Governors of the International Bank for Reconstruction and Development have appointed me to exercise their authority under paragraph six of the Bilateral Mines Field Breakthrough Successor Agreement. And you can see that agreement in the link to the teleprompter. Accordingly, by copy of this letter, I am informing the Director General of the Universal Postal Union International Bureau, H.E. Bishar Abdurrahman Hussein, that the Treaty of Versailles Gold Bullion Certificates in the Global Debt Facility are ending the network of global corporate control reported by Stefania Vitali, James B. Glatfelder, and Stefano Battiston of ETH Zurich. I look forward to working with the Universal Postal Union in the peaceful transition to national currencies minted from the gold in the global debt facility and to local currencies as introduced by villages and municipalities. And I want to put a recent comment about my work as the Overseer Mandate Trustee of the Global Debt Facility into context. And this was a comment that was tweeted. Karen is a beast, an unstoppable force. Thank you for your work, Karen, and keep it up. And then somebody whose name is Beastil wrote, or she's part of the beast system. Lawyers answer to the Queen of England, the bars. And Nestor Aguilar, uh, he put a link to some of the things that I have been saying about the legal profession. And he said to be still, you are the one that's part of the B system. Here are two Twitter PDFs where Karen talks about the legal profession. You can see how people are helping spread the word about the global debt facility and the 
global currency reset. And there are five tweets from Trinity. As the word spreads, the banking cartel's lies fall apart and reality becomes evident. And you can see some of the things I've been saying. We're going to be on the same page in reality. We're getting ready for a kinder world as more people understand about the vast wealth in the global debt facility that belongs to all of us. And we learned about the fundamental corruption in the world's monetary system. And then I also tweeted the inevitable global currency reset. My PC was hacked. Somebody didn't appreciate my work. And then I also tweeted about 21 island nations which were scammed with debt for nature swaps. Country debt doesn't exist because the Fed owes us two quadrillion dollars, which offsets any country debt. I want to warn you to stay off the topic of extraterrestrials, things that some people claim are happening in outer space. This is meant to distract you and keep you from fighting the corruption in our money system here on Earth. If we need to deal with anything that's happening in outer space, we can do that once we've dealt with the corruption here on Earth. Somebody named Karen was trying to distract us in this way. And we're going to talk without the teleprompter, but first, I want to remind you of three things. I'm going to put them in the teleprompter so you, you can see the documents. One of the things is that five years ago, a company in Taiwan tried to use the assets in the global debt facility to fight the explosion in Fukushima. They were doing this in an unaccountable way. When the power transition model that came to me in 2004 at the World Bank started predicting with over 95% likelihood that we were going to end the corruption in our money. This was when the UK Parliament asked George Osborne about the UK's share of gold in the global debt facility. And then there's a Twitter account named Jonathan Sadi, who repeated some of the tweets. He summarized the global currency reset for us. Now, let me talk to you a little bit, um, just extemporaneously. I've learned that people need to see that I'm a real human being, and so um, that's what I do. I just talk to you about what's going on. And you can see in these um, copies of tweets that were going around just how much people understand. They're spreading the word, and that's really the only way that we're going to find out about what's going on. You can see that uh, what's happening in the internet is uh, it's fake by the, for the most part. There's something called uh, uh, opposition, and that's, these are people that are just trying to confuse you. They give you half-truths, and then you uh, get terribly confused. The only way to fight this confusion is for you to work through the facts yourself and to do this in groups of people. Uh, it's not all that complicated, but you do have to, you have to, um, you have to do a little bit of work on your part. Uh, and if you look at the comments on YouTube, you can see that there's uh, all kinds of mixtures. There are things called sock puppets. These are people that um, pretend that they're uh, telling the truth, and they're really just trying to confuse you. For example, there are people that are talking about um, gold-based assets. And we're not talking about gold-based assets. We're talking about actual gold. We're not talking about the gold standard. Uh, and there are any kinds of ways for people to become confused. We, um, we did a tweet on controlled opposition that showed you some of the ways that people get, get confused. For example, there's this um, Twitter account called Q that's just um, half-truths. Uh, Q is not anybody who's uh, on our side. 
you can find out who's on our side. It's really very simple. You work with people who you know, who know you very well. And when uh, you start acting out of character, that gives you a clue that uh, you're not yourself. Because there's very powerful uh, military technology. It's like you're hypnotized. And I've gotten to know what this technology is very well because some of the people in my family and some of my good friends are very sensitive to this. It's very frustrating because it's as if you're, um, you're not talking to anybody. They're not able to hear you. Uh, and so what you have to do is you have to find people that aren't that sensitive to this technology. It's very, very widespread. And that's why we're still uh, grappling with this corruption, because so many people are just, um, they're hypnotized. They're not able to reason. And that's all the more uh, reason why, if you, if you realize that you're a person who is understanding at least some of what's going on, you have a responsibility. You're acting for these other people. And as people get accustomed to what the reality is, there'll be more and more of them. And you can see that this is, is actually going on. That's one of the things that has, has happened recently. There's, um, for example, this Jonathan, he had 71 tweets. And if you go and you work your way through them, you can see uh, what's going on. Um, now, what happened five years ago with, uh, with Fukushima, uh, this, this uh, company, YCT, generated a lot of documents. And in the beginning, I, I just took things at face value. I didn't understand uh, that they were just lying and to the extent that they were lying. But as time went by, I did realize this. And so you can see, um, we've been putting pieces of a puzzle together. It's a very large puzzle. And uh, at the very founding uh, foundation of this puzzle, uh, the money is not, uh, it's not real. And you can, you can understand exactly what's going on. If it's paper currency, then the central banks are issuing this paper currency and they're buying real assets with it, so they can just um, they can just take over, uh, and many of the publishers are just publishing all of these lies. They're not true at all. You have to you have to go back and reason, and fortunately, we have now through many years and a lot of work, we've now gotten to a, a position where we've got a critical mass, that is, enough people understand what the actual reality is. And there, um, the, we've passed the point of no return. It's a, it's a wonderful uh, feeling to know that um, I'm just part of a group. And I'm, I'm not anything um, very special. The, the uh, biggest characteristic that I have is that I, I'm not a quitter. I don't give up. And so you can see as time went by, as I learned what was going on, uh, I, just, I just plowed that back into what was um, the groups that were, that were working together. And, and so that's what we have now. Uh, where is this group? It's on YouTube for the, for the most part. And the fact that YouTube is um, not working with us, but working against us. So there, there are problems with the volume. Uh, that's, that's actually, it just shows you that um, we're for real. And there are many other ways to figure out that we're for real. Um, the, uh, the tweets that I show you, I could not conceivably make all of them up and have them all uh, working together. Uh, reality has a special characteristic 
and our ability to reason has a special characteristic. It reinforces itself. And so um, there's also an emotion about reality as people get used to working together and get used to figuring out what reality is. It builds their confidence. Uh, and so, yes, we're at a point of no return. We're in a community of nations. Uh, and one of the things that I tweeted was about 21 island countries that are, are now doing something called debt for nature swaps. Uh, there is no country debt because as we've seen, the Treaty of Versailles bonds are worth two quadrillion dollars. That's um, going to offset any country debt. There is no country debt for that part for that reason. So um, when countries are working on debt for nature swaps and they're, they're doing things, uh, they may want to do these things, but they don't have to do them. There's no bargain, there's no consideration because there is no country debt. Um, that's, that's the bottom line. Um, now, uh, what, what else do I have to say? Um, just that reality is reality. And reality is not going away. And neither are we. And so our, our, um, our critical mass of people is going to continue. Uh, one of the things that people have been concerned about is they've been concerned about my health because Let's face it, I'm, I'm just an ordinary human being, and I do have health issues. My heart uh, is now beating irregularly. I had an infection in my leg. If you see how slowly I walk, um, I'm not that strong. But what, what I don't have in strength, I have in determination. And this is not, uh, this is not anything to sneeze at. Uh, I was talking to you about um, some music that I'm playing but that was written by Bach. One of the things that Bach wrote about himself was he wrote that he was a very hard worker. He didn't give up and he didn't suffer fools uh, readily. So uh, when somebody was playing and they weren't making good music, he would, um, he would give them very um, clear feedback that they needed to work, work harder. And that's really what we're all doing. We're all working as hard as we possibly can. And the ones that are um, understanding what's going on, we're reaching out to the others and we're making some headway. Um, are we making enough headway? Yes, we most certainly are. Um, how do I know this? You can see this. You can see this just in the way that um, people are responding on YouTube. Uh, there's a dialogue going on. It's, um, it's really, it's very uh, gratifying to know that we're in communication. Um, and that's, that's where things stand. And it's really intensifying. Um, how do I know this? I know this by the quality of the interaction. Uh, and you can figure this out yourself when you read um, some of the comments on YouTube. Now, um, what happens frequently is uh, the comments disappear. I spent many hours uh, this past week trying to find things that went away. Sometimes they reappear, sometimes they go away. As you know, my computer was hacked and um, my email accounts have been compromised. So um, <laughs> it's, it's frustrating, but it also gives me um, a sense of reality. It gives me a sense that, um, that there is opposition. And so you can also sense that um, I'm for real and there is opposition there. Um, humanity is all one and that's how I know that we're going to win. Because if we're all one, then some of us 
we're all interconnected, and some of us are going to be um, getting rid of the, the corruption. We don't want to be um, directed, uh, and we're not going to be directed. We're going to uh, stand our ground. Uh, <laughs> And it's, um, it's actually, uh, opposition is a beautiful thing. And the thing about controlled opposition, where people are pretending that they're in opposition, but they're just trying to confuse you. If you, if you do your homework, if you reason, then you can figure out what's wrong. So, for example, somebody um, had written that uh, there was a group and they wanted to know whether this group was on our side or was on the other side. And there's a fellow named Lee Wanton, Lee Wanta, and he was, he was affiliated with that group. Now, you know that Lee Wanta is part of the banking cartel. So if he's affiliated with that group, then he's also affiliated with the banking cartel. It's not so difficult, actually. Uh, once you, you start putting the puzzle piece together, it's not so hard to figure out um, how, how things are shaping up. And yes, the, the corruption is, um, is disappearing, and the reality that's um, apparent is becoming more apparent uh, as things that are ha contradicting us um, they're not consistent, and, and so you can, you can reason. And that's one of the ways that we know that uh, we're, we're not going to be dominated, because we do have our ability to reason. And uh, so the banking cartel is it's giving itself away. Uh, and this is actually happening quite quickly because I'm looking at uh, the camera focusing. I'm not sure exactly what's going on with you, but um, uh, I'm actually, I'm delighted that we're having uh, this, um, this video because it, it gives me an opportunity to interact with you. And I, I, rel I relish that. Um, I'm very happy to be part of, uh, a movement to end the corruption that's been going on for thousands and thousands of years. Uh, and <laughs> it's, um, it's really coming to a screeching halt. I don't know how long it's going to take. That's one of the questions that comes up very, very often. People want to know, when are we going to uh, end this corruption? And there was actually uh, a controversy uh, one of the people in the Twitter account was saying, well, they're not getting any younger, and they want us to hurry up and, um, and, and the fake currency. But, you know, this is one opportunity. We're not going to have it again. Uh, the, uh, the assets in the global debt facility are there to end the corruption. And if we just um, spread them around without... Um, figuring out how to end the corruption, we're going to lose that, that opportunity, and it's not going to happen again. So we, we do have to um, figure out how to, how to work together in a way that's going to end the corruption. Um, and it's not going to be something that's going to be done by one person or one country. It's going to be done in uh, a coalition and we're going to be uh, working together and figuring this out. And it, it does take time uh, to figure these things out. But, um, and there's also, uh, people get very frustrated at the fact that it doesn't look like we're making much headway. We're just repeating the same old things. But you have to realize that uh, this corruption has gone on for thousands and thousands of years. And so if we have to repeat ourselves until people understand what's going on, we'll have to do that. I don't think there are any shortcuts. If there were shortcuts, we would have taken them by now. Um, so yes, which, um, 
it's, it's going to take a while. But uh, it's, a, it's a, a point of no return. The corruption, once people understand what it is, uh, and the fact that they're being dominated by a banking cartel and by uh, bloodline families, that's not going to, people don't want that. People just aren't going to, um, they're not going to allow it to continue. So, um, it's, it's, uh, it's evident, actually, that it's not going to continue. Thank you for listening to another segment of the Network of Global Corporate Control. We have discussed, excuse me, um, what, what's happening with the teleprompter? Well, I'm just going to end this then. And thank you for listening to us. We'll be back next week. going on. Um, but you know, Crochet Starnes has been doing our audio and teleprompter for um, many, many weeks. And we missed him very badly. So we have four minutes. Okay. Um, I don't understand how we have four minutes, but I'm glad to interact with you. Um, what, what did I want to, to tell you about? Uh, let me think for a minute. Um, Well, just uh, what's going to be happening with the uh, monetary agreements. We're going to have all of the mints are going to be issuing their own currencies of the nations. And this is going to happen um, in each country. It's not going to be directed from any one country. I had heard back from Pakistan, and you saw a letter from Pakistan back in 2014. Um, I don't know whether Pakistan is still interested, uh, but we're going to obviously um, work, be working with all of the different countries. And some of those 21 islands, um, they, might, they might decide that they don't want to be um, uh, signing over their oceans. Uh, there are so many different ways for the banking cartel to try to, um, to grab the world's wealth. And you've seen all of the correspondence uh, that I've written to all of these countries. But uh, the way it works is that um, they're, not, they're not getting anywhere because they have no way of proving anything. After 50 years, there's no, um, there's no proof. There is something called the Statute of Limitations, which says that after 50 years, there's, um, the, the evidence can't be introduced because it's not reliable anymore. So um, we, we have done something called vesting, which is to say the assets in the global debt facility belong to all of us, and any of the attempts to steal them um, have gotten nowhere. So <laughs> we're in good shape. Um, I'm hoping that I'll be allowed to continue as the overseer manager. Um, it's a position of trust. And I want to tell you that if um, I don't stand up to that, then there'll be somebody else. Because all of humanity is united, and we're ending the corruption in our money system. OK. Um, we have discussed in today's segment how the world's currency is corrupt and what we're going to do about it. We're going to pick up from there. And, and uh, that's, uh, that was secret inside the World Bank, and it's not secret anymore. So I think we've ended now. <laughs> We've been talking about the truth about who we are, 
The first thing is to keep an open mind. Until next week, I'm your host, Karen Hudis.